that they had enough time to get into the semis. Terminator, I'm very happy to see that he's kind of bringing himself back around with the Bowser Jr. Yeah, especially sure. when the game came out, he was having a little bit of trouble with the character. But I think after watching Catch Up and seeing all these other Bowser Juniors make some work happen, yeah. then he realized, okay, you know what? Maybe this game is not that bad. Yeah, and here exactly. we go. He actually did uh, go break away a little bit and play Lethal League. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're over at WNF, you'll definitely catch up playing that game as well. Yeah. I think it's always good to take some time away, play some other games, play some other fighting games, gain some other fundamentals. But let's forget about that. Let's talk about the Squirtle combos <laughs> and Shine already tacking on a bunch of percent on him. The bare fundamentals of being a Squirtle main right here. And at yeah. this point, right, getting those up airs is definitely going to play dividends to being in that percent here. Yeah. Now, I'm so happy that Shine picked Pokemon Trainer as his main for now. Oh, yeah. Because like he's always been a guy that has had so many character crises. Yeah. But now he's got character crises, the character. Exactly. Like, all put into one. It's like, okay, one's not working. Okay, mid-match, I'm just going <laughs> to switch to another one and see what happens. Why, why wait until after the match when you can do it in the match? Yeah, exactly. And now with the buffs on um, both Squirtle and Charizard, like, all of them are great. It's not just Ivysaur main. You yeah. can use all the other Pokemon. So It used to be great. just Ivysaur and friends. Now yeah. it's actually the trio. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's see here. Shine with a decent-sized lead. I mean, if he gets one bear, one fair, he might be able to close out this stock first. And I feel like that's what he's hunting for, but I like the fact that he takes the time to see the empty hop from a Tyranator, goes for an anti-air up smash, yeah. takes care of that stock, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Like Jack comes in. Ooh. Oh! I didn't know he even caught the Mega Koopa. Oh. Bad position, <laughs> the second one comes in. Yeah, he forced to switch off. Squirtle is one of the top three lightest characters in the game, so he will die early. Sneaks in that back air with a cross-up. I like that. Immediately after he sees the cross-up from Tater, another back air. He wants to make sure that if Tater's going for a cross-up like that, he's ready for it, but I feel like he kind of got stuck in that situation. Yeah. Oh, great conversion off of the bear. Gets a grab out of it. Not able to extend off into the up airs, but still, he's got himself in a good position. Ooh, great one. switch as well. I like the opportunity. Yeah, you do have that extra yeah. way with Charizard, right? so you will survive. Yeah, just take the hits with the with the Koopa, uh, with the Mecha Koopa. Usually, you won't die to it, so at least uh, you won't get hit by setup afterwards. Nice, has the Mecha Koopa. It doesn't reset if Charizard grabs it, only resets if Bowser Jr. does, if I'm not mistaken. Almost gets the back air. Nah, you try to get fish for it a little bit too long. Yeah, I like that. Just uses the Mecha Koopa, covers his landing, keeps himself safe for a little bit longer while the Angel Invisibility platform uh, invincibility goes away. Down tilt, good tech chase. Jab reset and the finisher here. Wow, two to one here. She did with a great tech chase. That was super crucial there because he definitely just made the lead much bigger. Yo, man, that forward tilt off the Squirtle is so good. Sets yeah. up in a tech chase situation. The tail is intangible. Yep. He's got a lot of great things about it. So I can see why uh, every character is so good with this uh, with the uh, Pokemon trainer. So yeah, overlap percents basically in stocks already here. Oh, missed the grab. At this point for Tater, right, it's how many cross-ups can I get to start breaking away from Shine's shield. Because that's one thing that Shine's always been putting up as a shield. Switching to ball. Ah, there was a good. And then he, at this point, he had to go low. Yeah. That was very nice, actually. Used the cannonball just to force a low recovery. And mm -hmm. it was already there, ready to meet him with a back air to be able to close out that stock. But for, now we got the Charizard at the ledge. Scary situation to be in. One back air, pretty much going to take the stock. Goes for the up smash. Still got great positioning. There's the fair. Takes him across the stage. Good use of down tilt. He does know it is going to stale, but it's not there for uh, hitbox. It's there to only scare Tater, to force him to go, okay, I don't want to get hit by down tilt. I'm going to have to be careful when I come back. I'm looking at Tater, man, and the shaky leg definitely shows signs of anxiety here. He's definitely feeding this comeback so far, and it's coming in close. Ooh, I, I like the attempt of the mix up there with the directional editors, make him think he was going one way, comes back the other way. But the Mecha Koopa, it's just Ooh. such great control here. Yeah, the oh, the up smash, but it gets covered by the Mecha Koopa. It's so smart. Seismic toss, will that be enough? Yeah, that's going to do it. No, it's no. not. <laughs> 156, I mean, that's the one thing Bowser Jr. has, is a little bit of weight to the character. What a great follow-up, waiting for the Mecha Koopa as well. Parry, nice. Parry into the, just grabs it right away, very smart. Wow, that side B almost did it on its own. I respect that because he wanted to wait to see if he should toss out an aerial, but he did not, and unfortunately, Tater, man, robs the bank, takes the money, and takes game one, man. The cops have lost the trail. Hopefully, the cops come back all together and form the three trio once more. Yeah, that was a very, very great control. Like, pretty much the opposite situation from the second stock. The last stock that time he used a cannonball and then it forced him to double jump. Mm -hmm. Charizard, very bad aerial mobility. Unless he flare blitz, he's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Just yeah. beat him with the fair, close out the stock, boom, set, done. Game one. Goes to Terminator here. Yep. The one, what, you know what they say, right? All war is based on deception. 
And that's why we saw Shine, like I said earlier, just to finish off that tangent. He was going for down tilt, not for the fact that he wanted to hit it, but he wanted Tater to understand, okay, I want to jump out of the ledge because I don't want to get hit by down tilt. But Tater had the same game plan around him, too. Okay, gets the jabs in. Both these two is looking for their early percent combos. See if they can get find something. Okay, there we go. Squirtle's gonna get a couple up airs. I like the DI out of Jaden area though. Gets out of that combo situation. Mm -hmm. and slowly, the damage is stacking on for Jadenator here. That was a good whiff too, especially from Chine. <laughs> oh man, that four tilt. <laughs> He's fishing for it too because he knows the tech chase could definitely lead to such a big lead. Mm -hmm. Grab. Oh, actually goes for a jump fair. All right, all right. Takes a safe bet, right? You do have that three frame shield drop, so if you try to go for a grab, sometimes that tends to be the slower option. I guess the trade in the air. Okay, that was good awareness from Chain Air. He directional air dodge on the platform to avoid the Mecha Koopa explosion, but then he just got met in the air again. I mean, that's always been the name of the game for Tainator a lot in Smash 4 as well. Using the Mecha Koopa to control the stage and then find the option From or the, the second best defense option afterwards and control that. So he's good, doing a good job of controlling that again. Yeah, that's good space for it all. Yeah. Just dash it forward and uh, just get a free punish. Very good. He's got himself in a bad position again. Mm. There's a the flamethrower, but... Mecha Koopa's gonna interrupt that. Oh. oh, that was very nice, actually. That time, they didn't use it to slide right down the middle, just used it to cover Shine's higher options. I don't think Shine was ready for that, so he just ran right yeah. into the cannonball there. And he already committed to going for that jump, too. Once again, he's go fishing for these down tilts, but I felt like Taylor's like understanding, okay, he was gonna go for that trick here. I need to make sure I shut him down before he gets the opportunity. This time, Shine takes it to the air to air. Good that use of down in. smash, looking to catch the landing there against Tater. Once he said, like, he said, Set the Mooka Koopa, set up control, and then immediately start to take things away from there. Tech chase? Mm hmm. Not quite the stock yet. I think if he maybe went for a second jab and then charged a bit, maybe. Yeah. Maybe just maybe, but not quite happening there. Oh, but still gonna get the stock there. Alright, Shinin 91%. Free Back grab. Arrow. Okay, so last week that I had, he actually had the most ridiculous combo where I think he back throw back air and then another back air and it's sweet spot and it killed early. I believe it. Yeah, it's Charizard and, I, yeah. After all. and the tail does have a tipper and it does have extra knockback, so you have to be careful with it. Yeah, I mean, the range on that back air is just absolutely crazy. It covers so much that it doesn't look like it should, but it just does. Oh, almost had it out, but the fair, the long lasting oh. hitbox just. It'll stop him out there. He has to be careful when going for those back airs too. One of those, th one of those two things I feel that Tater's catching on to is he loves down tilt with Squirtle, but he loves back air with Charizard. Man, I don't know how Shine fell for that setup there. Shane has been doing that landing with the uh, up the hammer for so long. <laughs> I don't know how, if he just forgot about it or what happened, man. But yeah, it's still in this game, man. He's got himself a good lead here, though. He doesn't want to try and drop it. Playing a little bit carefully. Yeah, I forgot his way in. Yeah, falling up air. Switch it. Yep, that's it. And that's great. <laughs> that's that's great space too, especially he was able to get a whip punish on that. Punish yeah. Tater for coming in a little bit too hard, and you get the space back there and the stock. Yeah, that was a very good switch there. Able to close out the stock very, very nicely. And and like I said earlier, right? She has always been the Swiss Army knife of characters. But when you finally like put that in a package, it just clicks. It mm -hmm. just clicks. Yeah. Alrighty, let's see here. Also, yeah, he's just gonna stick. Both of them are gonna stick with their characters. Yeah. Usually, Shinya doesn't really switch anymore unless he's his, like back to the wall or if he really feels like he got body because of a matchup. Yeah. He usually he's been sticking with the trainer now. So, all right, let's see here though, folks. Alright, game two. I'm sorry, game two or game three? I game like three. Yeah, game three. Okay, man. Yeah. Game one went by the speed of sound. Yeah, it's all been on the same stage too, so it's been kind of like a feeling of, oh god, it's been like the same match going on for like <laughs> eight minutes now. But not quite. Oh, extension on the platform? Not quite. No, missed the opportunity here, but this time here's gonna be the one to take it around here. For Shina, he has to look for the landing. Does not want to reset himself at the ledge? Pretty interesting option too, because Tater could have caught that. Yeah, at the early percent, these two just pretty much give each other the taste of their own medicine. Up air combos, and just finishing off with like a back air or forward air. Ooh. That was great spacing and knowing the fact that Tater, every time he goes for side B, it is going to be from that high up in the, the ledge. 
How does he get back down? Okay. I'll smash. Yeah. smash. Oh, wow. I was gonna say I'd wash myself with Harishina because that Mechakuba was there for a reason. Oh wow, that was a lot of setups. So many projectiles hitting at once. Again, <laughs> the projectiles. I think Charizard's head kind of just stuck out. His neck was a little yeah. too long, so he got clipped by everything. What he what? Oh, yeah, the devil. yeah, Razor Leaf into up air, classic Pokemon trainer stuff there. And that's the thing you have to be careful with Charizard's recovery, too, because he does have his head out a little bit too often, and that does expose his hurtbox. Yeah. Man, every time Wendy gets hit by something in a combo, it sounds like a dog yelping, like, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, that's an interesting audio clip, too. Yeah, really, really weird. But anyways, here we go. Oh, they're playing Hot Potato with the Mecha Koopa. And I like it because he knew Tater wanted to catch it because he does reset the Mecha Koopa when he catches it. So I have a really great opportunity to beat him out. Yeah. All right, but that up air is going to be able to close it out. Met him in the air. Now he's got himself another opportunity. Starts off with an air. Not able to follow up with the up air afterwards. Gets sent the wrong direction there. Yeah. He goes for the burnout there from the side B, so he wasn't able to get quite the big follow up there. Great spacing for Shine. Grab. No up. I thought he was going to go for the Vine Whip, but I do respect the up air. He might have been trying to catch a Tater on the DI mix-up. Uh, unfortunately, Wendy's a little bit too big to do the Gamer Tech of rolling behind. Not quite going to be able to escape that scenario there. Let's see what Shane is looking for. Tater really down in stocks here. He's got to close it out now if he wants to try and have a chance to. He's doing an excellent job of slowly opening Shane up, but the, still, he holds a lot of the control in the game here. Oh, wow, across the stage, I killed. <laughs> I'm actually laughing at the fact that he actually took the time to go for Flamethrower. I thought, like, going for the original attack that he had game one, right, using down to the Forest Tater to go for another option would have been a better play. Yeah, all right, switching immediately back to Charizard, and there's the back air. How many times do you think that Bear's going to win him a game, dude? That's, al that's already two here. And you, and you have to respect it, too, because it's got such great range. It's got a lot of knockback if it's tippered. And it's, it's not the fastest move, but it's got some decent speed and not a lot of startup. Yeah. All righty. Moving on to game four. Shine in the lead right now. Let's see where they go this time. Because I totally was not paying attention the first time. Okay, we're going back to stadium. <laughs> Neither of these two think it's the stage's fault. I think both of them are very comfortable here. All right, great combo extension off to the side already. Tanner is starting to open himself up a little bit too much, trying to find uh, something to start these combos, but all of a sudden, Shine with the big punishes, almost like closing out the stock too with that Vine Whip. Tanner has really got to be careful so far. All right, he's got the control here. Oh, but that was a great reversal with that hammer. Going to be able to make it back, though. He says the situation. Oh, but he held onto the ledge a little bit too long. That's going to be a forward smash. Wendy taking the first stock after what looked like a great start for Shine, but he just yeah. did not get hit once uh, he got the advantage position there. Oh, he wanted to get out of this advantage so fast. Went for the up B. <laughs> good, good pummel there because he knew, the, he knew the Mega Koopa's coming back. I definitely want to follow up from there. Yeah, I mean, Tanner has always been known for his Mega Koopa follow ups back mm -hmm. in Smash 4 as well. So he's finding new ones here uh, in this game as well. So very nice stuff. Shine's got to find the stock. Oh, yep. that was nice. Uh, cross up, up smash. That was very good. Oh, Mr. Grab, Squirtle able to go for the back. And this is Shine's opportunity to catch up in percent. Squirtle is more of the early combo percent character. Oh, down there, and it kind of stops him from the recovery and the up B. Woo, that was really nice, actually. He got carried to the edge of the stage. Shine got a little bit too greedy, and then all of a sudden he was in a bad position, and he just got caught in the bottom. Couldn't even switch the Ivy Sword. Uh, yeah. Junior Car was already there to stop him out. Not only that, being like super as light as Squirtle is, like it is going to kill at that percent too as well. Yeah. Nice, using all those jumps to make sure he tries to find other ways to come back on the stage. Oh, but back that air. back air going to take out a stock. <laughs> like, extremely early there, too. And you've been saying it, too. Like, how many times will that back air just come in to shave the day for Shine? Too many to count, man. Too many to count. All right, once again, combo percent here for Squirtle. All pretty up on there, but he's got to switch out. He's got 77%, and there it is. He's got to be careful about the Muku Koopa. All right, gets around it. Great timing on the back air, too. He jumped on that purpose. Ooh, this is anyone's game to take, man. 
Anything can happen. That was a great fair, though. Great spacing from Shine. Not going to find a roller behind. Oh, he wanted to go for back air. Yeah, even though if you hit it, still would be able to explode on the ground. All right, back throw. Ooh, <laughs> trying to find a back air. I was telling you guys earlier, right? He did get a back throw back air last week at hat. Great parry. Oh, he tried. Yeah, okay, he tried to yeah, he up would. smash, but Tanner up smash out of shield first. Yeah. Very clutch situation he there. He called this man out with a call out. Yeah. Okay, we're going to game five. No one wants to lose tonight, folks. PR Barely season, any man. three O's, yeah. So, for those of you guys wondering, back at home, back air is a 14 frame startup, minus 14 on shield, mi minus 14, 15, and 16 on shield. It's active the minute the move goes out. Oof. Auto cancels on frame one to three and 44 and onward. Not too bad. All right, switching to the DK. This is going to be interesting. DK, kind of a character that's going up and down in the meta. A lot of people can get some great stuff off of this character, and then sometimes people just hate this character. But all of us. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, gonna, whoa. It's, oh it's, no, 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 no. Nah, he's okay, good, he's okay. good, he's good. He's good. I thought for a second, like, if he got hit by Dare, if, he sem if it semi spiked him, oh, yeah. yeah, that would have been really bad, but not quite. So he's going to be surviving just a little bit longer. When you talk about the love and hate relationship with DK, right, he does lack some of the tools he had to smash for. Ding Dong being one of them, obviously. But the big thing here, honestly, is just being able to get juggled like that. And with a character like Bowser Jr. that controls a lot of the ground game, which is where DK sometimes likes to be to start things off, it's not going to be that easy for him. Oh, Mr. Crab. This is this just Magic is, uh, Wand City. Yeah, this is the tough part about DK, is that sometimes you'll get blown up like this. Then not much you can do to get out of it. Yep. Yeah, Tanner I think he looks very comfortable now. The trainer was looking a little bit difficult. Oh, he rolled into the explosion. Interesting. Okay. He set up the cannonball and the mech Koopa right there on point because it would have covered DK's height, jump, and neutral get up, and even roll. A smash out of shield. Almost did it too. Yeah, I think uh, Tanner kind of got this one in the bag unless Shine can find something really, really, really dumb. He could go for a cargo throw off the stage, and because of the tearing there's high percent on Bowser Jr., like that might actually work. Yeah, we'll have to see. He's gonna have to close the stock very soon, otherwise Tanner is gonna roll with this. Oh, the turnaround animation there. Big opportunity for Shine to try and take the stock. What's the ledge option gonna be? Takes his time, tries to fake out a trump. That's actually gonna be a ledge re-grab. Yep. Oh, and he tried to find the mix-up with uh, going over the stage, finding the hammer just like that. Yeah. But he went back to the ledge. That's a great mix-up game. And he, Taternator knew that he was going to play that mind game on him. Yeah, and not only that, being able to cross up and come back on the stage like that, honestly, it's a pretty big thing for Shina to try to figure out what he should have done in that situation. But he played it off right. Like, don't overcommit. Stay, stay calm. Wait for the opportunity here. Oof. Oh. Yo, man, if he actually got that fair, I would have actually... That actually would have been disgusting. Trying to close the gap a little bit too hard. And actually, Tainanator is going to be a full stock ahead at this point in game five. A critical point for Shine to try and find something here. Otherwise, Tainanator is going to roll away with the game and the set. Up throw. Nice. Good using neutral air. And that does give him positioning to put him up for another back air. Good shield. Looking for a grab or looking to see how he's going to cross him up. At this point for Shine, what he should be looking for is, yeah, the landing and where Tater's going to be at. Oh, tech chase. Try to find down B into maybe like up air or something like that. Not quite. I'll smash one more time. Oh, man. This is so difficult for Shine really to do anything. His big hurt box kind of just makes him get hit first. Oh, he's almost dead off of that. Oh, yeah. That's it. Death. That's it. All righty, Tainator moving on to Loser's Finals, securing himself a guaranteed third place here. He's going to be going up against K9 right now. Honestly, it's really good for Tainator to also, like,